This afternoon, we're going to begin with Ashes to Dust, written by Katie Leslie from Hollins University. Ashes to Dust by Kate Leslie. Anne sits in a car in the driver's seat. She's fidgeting and impatient. After a beat, Hattie and Meredith get into the car. Meredith is in the back seat. Y'all ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. We said goodbye to everyone. She was getting the I car. I told you I was getting the car. 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes of goodbyes and awkward hugs that I had to suffer through without you. Sorry, I this had to get out of there. I'm craving a cigarette so bad. It was just plain rude. This was a bad mom to quit smoking. I guess it's always about you. I'm not saying it's Girls. always about me. Please, I just cannot handle any more conflict today. Sorry, Mom. Anne starts the car. She opens a pack of gum and chews. So, how are you doing, Mom? I'm fine. You don't have to be fine. I will be fine, eventually. I'm just tired right now. Well, your dad just died. Anne, don't be so insensitive. What? I just meant if there was ever a time to not be fine, it's now. <laughs> Was Aunt Ellen driving y'all crazy? I swear, if she said one more thing about her precious Cliff making the varsity soccer team, I was gonna find my own Cliff and jump off. And What? I'm sad. Mom knows I'm sad. Don't you, Mom? Yeah, I know, honey. But... That doesn't magically make Aunt Ellen any less irritating. What does Uncle Tommy see in Jesus her? Jesus, and just What? Stop. No one was saying Some anything. Some of us might need I just the couldn't quiet. stand. Girls! Actually, I was getting tired of Ellen's sports talk. <laughs> I mean, we get it. He can throw a ball, right? You kick a ball in soccer? Either way. Cliff is so gray. Cliff is so perfect. Cliff has a 4.0 GPA and can't decide between all his scholarship offers and missing a funeral for a soccer game. Grandpa just died. I know he's varsity or whatever, but your grandfather's funeral should override a sporting event. Can we just drop it? I'm sick of talking. Fine with me. Sure. Hattie sighs and puts her hand to her head as if a headache is coming on. Mom, are you okay? Look what you did. Shit. I'm sorry, Mom. I can stop chewing so loud. Mom? I just spit it out. Cremation! He never mentioned it before, not once. Mom, what are you- I mean, he has a funeral plot, owned it for years. You don't have a funeral plot for years because you want to be cremated. I bet Ellen talked Mom into it. Oh, she is so cheap. You didn't know Dad, Grandpa was being cremated? What are they gonna do with that funeral plot now? Oh, it has such a nice view. Aunt Ellen said they would bury the earth. But what's the point? <laughs> what is the point? Mom, maybe you should just call. I uh, helped take care of him. I was the one who noticed when he started forgetting things, mowing the lawn three days in a row, telling the same story three times over dinner. I was the one who took him to all those doctors. So I should have been consulted about where he ended up in the end. Mom, don't get so worked up. Damn right I'm worked up. <sighs> they just 
decided without me? I mean, how long does it take to say, oh, actually, Mr. Funeral Director, don't start the fire just yet. We should call his daughter and see if she has an opinion about cremation. I mean, he wasn't going anywhere. This is getting morbid. Mom, I'm really sorry. Ooh, that's all right. I decided to do something about it. Patty reaches for her giant purse. She pulls out a plastic bag of ashes. I brought Dad with me. <laughs> Mom? <coughs> I think I just swallowed my gum. <laughs> you didn't really take. Oh, yes, I did. Here he is. Hey, turn the car around, drive it around, drive it back to Grandma's. No, 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 that is not the plan. I think someone will notice that Grandpa is gone. The urn is still there. <laughs> I doubt anyone will be looking inside the urn before they bury him. Nobody looks inside those things. I did. This morning. Are you serious right now? I'm a curious person. We need to pull over. Uh, there's a 7-Eleven at the light. And do not pull over. You stole Grandpa! He's my father, too! I took care of him when he was alive, so ain't no need to change the routine. I'm parking at the 7-Eleven. Mom, let's talk about this. Yeah. Like, when did you do it? Uh, how did you get him out of the house with no one seeing? And can you run inside and buy Mama a bottle of water? I want to be a part of this Just conversation. Just do it. Fine. But I'm buying some cigarettes, and I don't want to hear any complaints about it. It's been a stressful day. And gets out of the car. You know, I really wish the two of you wouldn't fight. I'm not going to be around for forever. Can we not talk about your impending death while you're holding Grandpa's ashes? Funerals make people think about dying. That's just how it is. Mom, what the hell? Do you have a plan? Mm-hmm. See, I figured they could bury the urn tomorrow, and, and I could do something with the ashes. Um, see, I didn't get a say in the other plans, but it only seems fair that I get to tell them Mom, what Mom, it doesn't make no sense. You weren't there for all the plans, but you heard how they were bickering, Ellen, Tommy, Susan, fighting over all the details. Oh, the obituary should say this. The funeral service should be on Friday. No Saturday. We can't ask people to eat off paper plates at the wake. What's wrong with paper plates you, anyway? I still don't know. <laughs> they barely made any time for Dad when he was alive, and now they just show up and think they get to have a say. They are your family. Well, family is complicated. No shit. Anne returns with a bottle of water, a pack of cigarettes, and a large Slurpee. She gets in the car. Really? It's my favorite flavor. Mom, have some water. So, should I drive back to Grandpa's? He always loved fishing at the lake. We can spread his ashes there. I think he would like that. And then later, I can refill the bag with ashes from our fireplace and take them over to Grandpa's tomorrow. <laughs> no one will know the difference. You are having a nervous breakdown. I'm down. She grabs the bag of ashes from Hattie. Come on, Grandpa. We're going to the lake. <laughs> Please help me reason with her. I won't tell anyone about this, Mom. Meredith? You better not tell nobody either. You're both insane. He is her father too. Was her father. Was. That was an insensitive comment, Meredith. No, encouraging this madness is insensitive. We're taking Grandpa to the lake. It'll be cathartic. Stop it. Mom, I love you. But we have to return the ashes and put Grandpa back before your crazy family sees that he is missing. I am not going back. We just escaped. You're not helping. They continue to fight over the ashes. At least I'm listening to our mother, it which is more than what more you like are doing. I the listen. Someone to be responsible. Oh, oh. enough. Oh. The 
bag rips. Ashes fill the car. Oh. My. God. See what you did? I definitely need one of those cigarettes. Don't roll down the window. Why not? Because Grandpa would just blow into the 7-Eleven parking lot. <laughs> it's not funny. It's, it's a bit funny. Well, I don't think that this is funny. Anne takes a sip of her slurping. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I think you got Grandpa on my Slurpee. <laughs> I'm gonna miss him. What should we do? Well, there's still some in the bottom of the bag. To the lake? To the lake. <laughs> Referring to the ashes that cover them. Oh, yeah, we, we, we might just have to jump in. <laughs> Grandpa would like that. Next stop, the lake. <laughs> but one of you owes me a new slurpee. <laughs> Blackout, end of play. Can we give it up for Ashes to Dust by Kate Leslie again? <laughs> this afternoon, the plays that you're seeing are all uh, written by students from around the nation, but they are directed and performed by professional actors and directors in the D.C. area. So I'd like to note that uh, Ashes to Dust was directed by Rick Hammerley, and it featured Moriyamo Timidayu Akibu. Billy Creshaw, uh, Sonja Parks, and Peter McClure, excuse me, McHale. Next up, we have Silver Sixpence by Jesse Pitts from Western Washington University. Yes, give it up for Jesse, all right. It's over here. Some of you may have been around for the last couple of days and noticed, known that the Kennedy Center had an elevator that got stuck, and Jesse happened to be the one in it, and uh, among with three students and had to be pulled out by the firefighters and repelled out. So she's had quite an experience all the way from Washington State to this Washington, D.C. So, silver sixpence. say shit or he'll smite you the second you step down the aisle. Don't joke about that. Fuck! Why'd I choose heels? Because you didn't have the balls to choose Crocs. Ugh, those fucking wedding Crocs. Who sees Crocs and thinks, these need to be in my wedding? It's the traditional hetero wedding attire. You should know that. Of course. It's traditional to slip into them right before the priest says, I now pronounce you man and legal property. <laughs> I'd be better off with the Crocs. These things are giving me blisters already. Just walk barefoot. Mom would kill me. Can you imagine? Honey, this isn't how we raised you. Your husband shouldn't see your feet until after the wedding. Make sure Josh doesn't see your ankles. It's just not right for a woman to be flashing them around. Oh, Eliza, dear, cover those earlobes of yours, why don't you, you slut? <gasps> As if Mom would ever swear. If she did, I'd drop dead. What time is it? Almost one. You should head back out there. Unless you've changed your mind about the dress. Hard no. Sorry. Yeah, I figured. It's just, I love you and all, but I'm not putting that on. No, I get it. You should go sit down. I'm going to wait, if that's OK. 
not in the mood to make small talk with mom. Did she see your hair? Yeah. And? She got this really tight smile and said, Lilith, you've changed your hair. Like, no shit, mom, it's buzzed. She could have said worse. She didn't want to ruin the wedding, I guess. You know what really would have ruined the wedding? If you'd brought Felicity with you. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Part of me wishes you'd brought her, just to make mom squirm. I'm not gonna be responsible for ruining the wedding like that. That's mom's problem, not yours. It, there's just, there's just this delicate window that mom sees me through. She sees what she likes and blocks out the rest of me. And if I brought Felicity, that's not something she could block out anymore. That would be the end of that. She already knows you're gay. I mean, maybe? Maybe? I never came out to her. What? Yeah, I, I told you and dad, and I think grandma probably knows because she'd asked if I'd seen the newest episode of Ellen and then just stared at me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets past grandma. But mom just hasn't said anything to me about it, and I can't tell if she's pretending like she doesn't know or what. Why not be honest with her? <laughs> you're shitting me. No, I mean it. If you're so worried that she'll find out about your girlfriend, why don't you just tell her yourself? And risk her never speaking to me again? She wouldn't do that. You don't know for sure. She probably already knows anyway, so why not give it a chance? It doesn't work like that. You can't just say, surprise, I was yanking your chain this whole time. Don't worry, God answered your prayers, I'm straight. Okay, well, <laughs> why don't you just go sit down? With mom? Are you even listening to me? Okay, then sit next to dad. I don't want to sit with either of them. Did you know that dad said that he would probably come to my wedding? When I came out to him, I asked, I said, Dad, would you ever come to my wedding? And he hesitated. He waited five seconds before saying probably. That's good. No, it's, it's the opposite of good, actually. Well, it's not your wedding day today, is it? You wouldn't have to sit next to anyone if you'd just agreed to be a bridesmaid. I'm not wearing that fucking dress. It's clothing. You've said it before, clothing doesn't have a gender. You can't wear a dress for an hour? No, I can't. Do you know how much it hurts to not have my sister in the wedding? Don't bullshit me, I would have loved to be in the wedding. You're the one who said I couldn't wear a tux. Bridesmaids don't wear tuxes! Says who? Open your fucking eyes, it's not the 13th century anymore. Why are you having your wedding in a church? Why shouldn't we have our wedding in a church? No one has church weddings anymore. Go have it at the country club like all the other straight people. There's nothing wrong with Josh and I having a Catholic wedding. Except I can't be in it because I'm a disgusting lesbian. It's not about that! All you had to do was wear a dress for one hour! Was that too much to ask? Yes. It was. Fuck you. Fuck you and fuck Josh, too, for having a fucking Catholic wedding, and then saying it's my own fault for not being able to take part in it. No. Fuck you. This is my wedding. My one day. You didn't even have to bring Felicity to ruin it. Shit. Lily. No. <laughs> You're right. It's your wedding, and I'm sorry. It's, I just... I'll just go sit down. I'm leaving. Lily, I'm ruining your day and you haven't even walked down the aisle yet. I'm a shithead. Don't listen to me. You're not ruining my wedding. I'm not going to sit with her. You don't have to. I'm sorry. It's just lonely. You've got me. I know. I'm not much, I don't know what it's like to be you, but I'm trying to understand. Yeah. And you know what? What? If you and Felicity get married, I'm gonna enlist every parent I can. I'm gonna put a post on Craigslist and hire a shit ton of moms so I can fill every seat. 
We're talking like 50 moms. 50 moms? And no less. Do you know anywhere I could sit away from mom and dad? You can sit next to Josh's sister if you want. You'll get along perfectly with her kid. She's five years old and she likes garbage trucks and Legos. How does that sound? Hey. Love you, kid. I love you too. Josh is in for a hell of a story tonight. <laughs> He'll never find out. I'll tell everyone you were in the bathroom for a really long time, just absolutely shitting your guts out. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. <laughs> These heels are the worst. I'm going to cut my feet off. I trade you, but I mean, only if you really want to wear my Oxfords down the aisle. You'd be okay wearing these. Well, I don't really want to, but it's better than wearing a dress. You're still a size eight, right? Yeah. You don't know how tempted I am. I mean, they're kind of old and smell like shit, but your dress would cover them up. You know what? Let's do it. Silver six pens in her shoe. Bitch, that's a nickel. Ah. Uh, I did the best with what I had. Might as well try, right? How's mom gonna feel about the shoes? Oh, who cares? I'm sure Josh didn't want me to be taller than him anyway. It's his day, too. That's some hetero nonsense. <laughs> well, he's my hetero nonsense. You're right. These are terrible shoes. <laughs> So Silver Sixpence was directed by Hannah Wolf, and it featured Lynette Rathnam and Gamma Gay. Our third national finalist for the Gary Garrison 10-Minute National Play Award is Whale, written by Peter Devon Shawley from Glendale College in California. Whale, a play, written by Peter D. Von Schale. Cast, Elmer Ruger owns a horse ranch. Margaret Ruger, his dedicated wife. Richard Ruger, their son. Diane Ruger, their granddaughter. Gavin, a neighbor. Setting, in front of a small farmhouse in upstate New York, the Ruger home. The air is cold as fall begins in earnest. The front door is open despite the weather, the main living room well lit and the TV running in the background, tuned to a local news station. The rest of the house is dark for now. The front yard contains a small garden and a fenced space for dogs, as well as a small pile of wood. At rise, Elmer Ruger is standing in the front yard, looking up at the sky. Elmer, what the heck are you doing? Dinner's getting cold. Come on in. Honey, come out here. You need to see this. There. It was really clear a second ago, but it's still there. You see it, don't you? <laughs> of course, dear. I'm not blind. How long has it been there? Came out here for smoke. Heard a noise like a song far away. 
I looked up and there it was, just sort of drifting across the sky like that. It looks like it's swimming. Yeah. See the tail moving there and the fins? It glows sometimes too, or, or flickers, I guess like a light about to go out. Well, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Maybe it's a good luck sign. <laughs> All right, come on in now. You'll be grumpy if you don't eat. L Margaret, what are you doing? Oh, don't yell like that. You'll spook the horses. There's some sort of a monster in the sky, and you're worried about that? For heaven's sake, Elmer, it's not a monster. Looks like a whale. Why is it up there, then? How did it get there? How's it living without water? Well, I'm not sure about any of that. There's no sense in getting all worked up, in any case. We can't do anything about it. At least we ought to tell somebody. Should, should we call the military? What, what if it's dangerous? I haven't heard anything at all about it on the news or on the radio. I think if it were that big a deal, more people would be worried. Oh, come inside. What? Don't make me ask again. What? A light in the house goes on. Diane Ruger opens a window. What's going on? Why are you guys yelling? Oh, your grandfather's just being a worry wart. Is that a whale? She climbs out the window. It's beautiful. Pop, pop, where's your camera? D Diane, where's your, where's Ricky? We should get out of here. I don't like this at all. It looks like it might be a finback. That's the second largest kind after the blue whale. Honey, it's not natural. What's gotten into the two of you? You don't seem worried. Well, I'm a little frustrated. I worked hard on a meal, and nobody's even interested. Dad! <laughs> Mom! Did you see the whale? Oh, Richard! Get down off the roof! You'll Dad, break your neck! You still got your binoculars? I'll get them. Don't bother. It's gone now. What? Aw, where'd it go? Grandpa, wasn't that the coolest thing? <laughs> We'd probably never get to see one in the wild. It's all right with me, as long as they stay there. Feels like I'm going nuts. Didn't seem that strange to you at all. Of course. I think it must be a very rare event, like a comet. What if we were the first ones ever to see it? Well, sweetie, nobody should see it. It shouldn't be there to be seen. That's what I'm saying. It could be an entirely new animal. I wish you wouldn't be such a pessimist. Just a little concerned. Could just as easily be something bad or something good. I just want to know. You no, know, I, uh, I think it's one of those government projects. The, yeah, UFOs from the space, from the old days. They say some of them were real. Experimental aircraft, military stuff. It was easier to sell the public on aliens, though. So, some sort of plane, then? No, 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 much more sophisticated. Maybe a spacecraft test or a new kind of drone? Who knows? We all s saw what it was, or, or what we thought it was. Of course. That doesn't rule out other options. Mass delusions, illusions, manipulation, hallucinogenic drugs. They like to test out stuff here in the sticks. It's easier uh, where they think no one will notice. Well, why make it look like that then? What's the point? That's how they operate. Keep you confused and distracted. Sometimes things just are what they are, Ricky. You're too suspicious. <laughs> A faint blue glow lights the stage for a moment. Oh, dear. It's back again. I suppose you're right, Diane. It's not something you see very often. We might as well enjoy it. It went behind the moon. I'll be right back. Gotta get the binocs. The moon's hundreds of thousands of miles away, isn't it? How big do you think that thing is if we can still see it? Don't know, but... It looks bigger now. Is it getting closer? Hey, Elmer! Did you see that thing? <laughs> yes, we've seen the whale. 
Is it a whale? Are you sure? No, I'm not sure of a damn thing tonight. Elmer, don't be rude. You know he means well. Just thought maybe you'd want to see it if you hadn't seen it yet. Pretty wild, right? Yeah. Seems like everybody's glad to see it except me. What do you make of it? Hell, I don't know, really. Some sort of space cloud, you know, like on the Science Channel? A, a nebula, or certain kinds of uh, gas can... Damn it, Gavin, you know better than that! Well, shoot, man! Sometimes something just so big and so weird you can't quite tell what to make of it, even if you're looking right at it. I found them. Maybe you're right, Diane. <laughs> Maybe I'm just missing something. I don't see anything. Keep looking uh, to the left. It's there, all right. You think maybe it's some sort of a blimp? It's in space, Gavin, for God's sake. Like I said, experimental spacecraft. I'd buy anything at this point, except what it looks like. It can't be what it looks like. It just can't. Ah! Oh, Christ. Diane, what happened? Oh. Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. Wait. Wait. What's the matter with you? What do you see? She was right. Diane was right. It's beautiful. Oh, God, it's so beautiful. Get it together. What's gotten into you? You were right too, Dad. What are you talking about? It's not a whale. Blue light envelops the stage. Blackout. of the round for The Whale by Peter D. Von Schale. The Whale was directed by Caden McCreevy and it featured Rick Fauché, Tyler Iams, Kim Schraff, Park Williams, Michael Willis, and Dan Poppin. So that concludes our three national finalists for the Gary Garrison 10-Minute Play Award. Next up, we have two uh, excerpts from national plays that uh, recipients of the National Play Awards. And the first step is going to be uh, in your program is going to be the recipient of the Rosa Parks Playwriting Award. Black Book was written and performed by Austin Dean Ashford. It is a one person play when Austin plays a number of characters within it. Austin is from the University of Arkansas and he wanted everybody to know this is his second trip to the Kennedy Center and he couldn't be more happy about that. I think you're in for a real treat as Ms. Austin Dean Ashford. Twelve summers ago, my mom made me go to forensics camp. <laughs> Instead of football or basketball, I had to learn how to do speech and debate. But then, we started dating in Dr. Lindsay's class. <gasps> All right, everybody, repeat after me. Now, now. I am phenomenal. I am capable. I say, I say. I grew to love you, forensics. You taught me what it means to break and to be broken. You'll be with me eternally like coaches, laughs, and dancing at postings. But we're done now. I can't compete anymore. I graduated and aged out. You broke up with me and it breaks my heart. But we've had a beautiful relationship 
and know that whatever happens now, I still love you. Doom, doom, doom. Good morning, Tall Senior High School. Uh, it's Principal Betsy, and I'm so happy to have all of you here for the first day of summer sessions. Just so all of you guys know, a couple announcements. The air conditioner is broke, so it might get a little warm, please. But the barbed wire fence is fixed. So just so you know, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Uh, uh, hi, Mrs. Schmidt. Uh, my name's Austin Ashford. I'm here to teach the summer speech and debate camp. Oh, yes. Follow me. Uh, I want to tell you, I was really nervous about coming today. I saw that video online that went viral. Uh, that was an isolated incident. That situation was handled. Uh, I mean, what do you expect when you arm all teachers with guns? It was unfortunate for us to lose Vernon Williams. He had an incredible amount of potential. But all of our teachers that have firearms are licensed, including Mrs. Pelosky, who was one of our finest instructors. She transferred us no longer with us. Wait, so she just got away with it? The situation was handled. What is your name again? Uh, my name's Austin Ashford. Mr. Ashford, I want all of my students to graduate, especially my black boys, which is why I created this class, and that's the only way they could graduate is if they finish. Okay. Um, do you know if they watched the movie The Great Debaters that I sent? Who knows? <laughs> but what you need to know is they were all very close to Vernon Williams. Wait, they were all friends? Boop! Your class is down the hall and to the left. And remember, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours! Boop! <laughs> um, uh, hi class, um, my name is Austin Dean Ashford, and I'll be teaching all of you guys forensics or speech and debate. Dun, 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 dun. That man is super bald! Uh, <laughs> How about everybody start uh, sitting in your seats so we can go ahead and get started with class? Hey, man, you disrespectful. Get your whack ass bag out of that chair. He didn't know Jabari. Well, he knows now. Well, you need a translator, bruh? Move your shit. <laughs> Look at him. He looks lost. Man, he's wearing a tie on the first day. You ain't gonna make it around here like that, bruh. Yeah. You gotta learn how we speak. You gotta get what our language. Okay, uh, let me kick it. Uh, I can teach you how to debate, arrange words, just for public speaking. Yeah, pull out your paper pad. I'ma show you how to argue with facts. Research your numbers and stats. You can use poems, but make it connect. Rap it without a beat, use a speech flow elite. Obstacle obsolete, let me speak, let me speak. Integrate evidence, warrant the arguments. Lyrical battle zone, without a microphone. Hey, I'm Austin, your instructor. This be the structure. Before we go further, first, demand the room's attention and make them listen when you break down your contention with intention. Whoa, before I talk message. <laughs> Y'all got any questions? Whoa, that's not debate. You was rapping bars. Uh, you're wrong. That is debate. Uh, poems are arguments. Raps are arguments too, and you can use all of that in your speech. Hey, let me record you doing that whack ass rap on my phone one more time. You made a rap about debate? You lame as hell, bro. <laughs> hey, where are the girls that I'm not trying to be here all summer with no queens? Uh, there'll be no women in this course. What? Oh, hell no, I can't do this. I'm going to need something fine to look at if you want me to be motivated. Mm-hmm, motivated. Uh, that's fascinating. Look at you guys. You guys are arguing. This is how we debate, bro. Uh, that's not debate. <laughs> debate is intricate with arguments and facts, and that's why I'm here to teach you guys. And at the end of the showcase, uh, we'll end of the debate, because nobody lives above critique. So the homework is, wait a minute, you don't even know our names yet. Yeah, aren't you going to call Raw? I can do it. I can call Raw. 
Shabuya, Sh Sh Shabuya Roll Call. My name is Brandy. Yeah, and I'm a Leo. Yeah, and I can't help it. Yeah, I got an ego. Roll Call. Shabuya, Sh Sh Shabuya Roll Call. My name is Daniel. Yeah, and I hate people. Yeah, I would smoke weed. Yeah, but it's a legal roll call. Shabuya, Sh Sh Sh. I'm not playing your whack ass icebreaker game. Uh, what about you? What's your name? That's Pierre. He a boxer, but he ain't got no hands at all. What's wrong, man? Well, why don't you talk? You know this is public speaking class, right? OK. Um, everybody, your homework assignment is going to be to write down your big why. What is your big why? Why do you wake up every day? Quick, Daniel, tell me yours. Um, my big why is because I'm not tall, so this is all I got. Uh, my big why is this talking thing keeps me out of trouble. Uh, my, my big why is, is because Vernon can't. So you do talk. Hey, man, what you doing here? Yeah, you scared? You think you could protect us if somebody comes to school and brings out a gun and aims it at you? Bang. You're not scared about freezing in that moment, are you? Yeah, one of us could be the shooter right now. It's kind of scary to think that somebody could come and shoot all of us and we would just have to deal with it. If you're so good at debate, tell us why nothing happened to Mrs. Pelosi. Yeah, can you tell us what they said to get her off? Nothing happened at all. They shot my best friend and didn't say nothing to us. I remember the last time I saw Vernon. We was walking to the Capitorium and we saw this kid getting bullied. And Vernon was cool, man. He walked over there and helped the kid. Yeah, Vernon was cool. He was pulling all of the kids off of him. And that's when, that's when Mrs. Pelosi came out of the classroom with her gun. She yelled, stop. And then like two seconds later, we hear this real loud bang. Right in Vernon's temple. Mrs. Pelosi killed Vernon. And I got it on my phone and recorded it and posted it. All that happened and nobody said nothing to you guys at all? Man, why we gotta learn how to do debate, bruh? They popping guns out here, do you hear me? You see this chair? This is Vernon's chair. And now this chair's empty. Are you think you could just walk up here and start to just change shit? Damn, what you got in here, a chopper or something, bruh? Hey, give me my bag back now. Tell us why you make us do all this speech and debate for no reason now, because somebody did it for me. Look, how do I teach students to be special in a place like this, Jabari? Because every student wants a job, and every student and every student gets, gets the same chance, and you know that, then tell me what to do. How do I teach students on their targets? How do I teach a boy not to be a bullseye, huh? What lesson plan do I create that'll make it safe? Man, you a washed up great debater who passed his prime. You a great hater. I might be a hater. I might be washed up. But I still question, do black men not teach for a reason? Did you know only 2% of all teachers are black men? But that doesn't explain what happened to my friend. I watched a video over and over get likes, like a highlight clip. You see that? That's Vernon's chair. And Vernon was good. He stopped fighting everything and he still got killed. You want us to do speech? How about I do something for you? Yeah, something me and Vernon worked on. I'm somewhere between the bell and the bang. Bang! And unless you want to get ringed by this bell, act right unless you get banged. Bang! You, give me the education, the textbooks, the big ones, yeah, Robin Hood's here, and I'm trying to stop you from the virus program. Destroying those who attempt to rebel my empire. Translation, my program is unstoppable, stoppable, stoppable, stoppable. The 13th Amendment and slavery, but allows slavery under punishment of crime, ensuring 70% of black boys go to prison some time, time, time. I ain't got time to waste. Robin Hood's here, taken from the privilege and given to the oppressed. You think I won't do it? 
I'm not going to be another illiterate class clown in the classroom deemed unteachable from, from the virus. Set to kill Negroes, kill Negroes, k k kill Negroes. The enemy justified to be killed racially years ago. D d database download. 40,500 black boys will be arrested this year. 2,500 this week. 100 today. I, I, I am a virus. I'm doing this for my grandmama because I never graduated high school. This is for the illiterate who can't read or write, but we can count. We can count on injustice. We can count on 846,000 blacks to be in prison. We can count on jails being overpopulated. We can count on America wanting black men to be illiterate since we first got here. It's brilliant. Create laws allowing slavery for crime, then create a crime for those you want to enslave. Brilliant. It costs $45,000 a year to keep an inmate in prison. What if we cut that money in half and use it as Pell Grants for the education? Yeah, I'm Robin Hood. And me and my married men can eject this education. Homework and syllabus, run that shit, nigga. Bang! For every black body that was locked down before we were read up. Bang! For every black man that was shot, killed, or beaten due to police brutality. Take this education and flip it with a bang. Cause I'm tired of in between the bell and the bang. Bang! Our final performance this evening will be an excerpt from the recipient of the Harold and Mimi Steinberg National Student Playwriting Award. The play is Tomorrow Game. It's by Brandy Carey from Carnegie Mellon University. It is directed by Lely Lepard, and it features Mariamo, uh, excuse me, Timmy Dio Akibu and Regina Aquino. Thank you for coming out this evening and enjoy our final performance, an excerpt from Tomorrow Game. Sometimes tough, a bad liar, lonesome. The earth, this is a world of profound solitude brought about by extreme danger. Acid rains and fog, poison pockets of air, earthquake. Infrastructure is gone and order is mythological. No military, no government, no doctors, no medicine, no safety net. Just death and not death. Not today, not yet. Roe makes no effort to be quiet as she stokes the fire, puts water in the pot, pisses in a bucket in the corner. Slept. The rain stopped. Too soon to go out. Oh. I have to shit. Can't open the door yet. Then where do I shit? Outside. You said we can't open the door. It's too soon. Okay, then where Piss do I- Piss in the I... bucket, shit outside. But since it's too soon to go outside, what do you expect me to do? Wait. Don't be absurd. Belle goes over to the bucket and pisses. Hey!
We shit outside. You weren't going to open the door. I kept you alive. Maybe. You s Maybe not. Dink. Shit smells. I did what I had to do. You understand, right? I'll bring seeds when we can open the door. For the shit? For a gun. Got no bullets. Let's eat. They put cold stew in their bowls. They eat. How long till we can open the door? Soon. If Pete is hungry, he can eat meat. And if Hazel is hungry, she can eat what? Who is Hazel? Mm. If Pete is hungry, he can eat meat. And if Hazel is hungry, she can eat Who? basil. Basil? If Claire is hungry, she can eat a pear. And if Jean is hungry, she can eat what? A pear. Think. Is a game? Yes. I don't know. Mm. Think. Pete has meat, Hazel has basil, Claire has a pear, Jean has a... Bean. Yes. Jean has a bean. <laughs> if Anne is hungry, she can eat... Food in a can. Sure. And if Shelly is hungry... Jelly! Right. Okay. Okay, so... <laughs> If Ryan is hungry, he can have a lion. No. Lion's food. Wait. If Ryan is hungry, he can have radishes. But if Belle is hungry, she has to have beets. No. Yes. So if Merritt is hungry, she can have carrots. No, but she could have meat. No. Mm, yes. If Chloe was hungry, she could have carrots. You changed the rules. I made the game. That's not fair. That's how games work. If Tara is hungry, she can have what? Tara, Tara, I don't know. Think. No. Tara can have tomatoes. Sam. Sam. Sam, Sam, Sam. Tara, Tara, tomato. Sam, Sam, stew, stew. Right. <laughs> Good. Ro could have rats. Yes. Winston could have a warthog. Yeah. <laughs> Good game. I think it's time to open the door. Not yet. I'll come back. Don't care. I'll bring seeds. I want to make a trade. She tries Not Yet. She tries the dryness of her clothes. Good enough. She starts to change. <laughs> that shirt is dirty. I, I was running in the woods in no. a bad rain. My shirt. I slept on the floor. <laughs> Belle continues to change her clothes.
Where did we go? Four crooked trees, someone rose over. Where did we go? It got more words. What? The song. Yes. How? I gave it more words. Why? To help me um, remember things. And for fun, I suppose. For fun. I like how games are fun. Yeah. We can open the door now. Good. Belle and Ro put on their gas masks. Ro unlocks the multiple locks on the door. She slides the heavy metal door open. Outside it is sunny and bright. Some of the plant life has been killed by the bad rain, withered and blackened, but the trees and some bushes with glossy, bright color le colored leaves still live. They look out. Belle grabs a gun from the wall and points it at Ro. Ro reaches for her gun. Don't move! No bullets. That's a lie. That's mine. I need it. Thief! I'll bring seeds. You soon. Goddamn thief! It's a trade. You don't need this many guns. You can spare one, and I'll bring seeds. Tomorrow. Or the day after. Belle runs. Ro grabs for her gun and runs to the door. She points it out the door after Belle. Waits. Waits. Eventually, she lowers the gun. She closes the door. End of scene. Thank you for joining us at Millennium Stage. As we prepare for another performance, we ask that you help us by heading towards the back of this house so we can 